Hey, Friendly Neighborhood Geek here doing another action figure re-review, continuing our Fantastic Four week. Um, we're taking a little detour. Um, if you can see behind me, uh, you can see my <laughs> the water bottles in the way, but you can see my um, Marvel Legend box set Fantastic Four on display on my uh, desk. Yes, so like I said, we're taking a little detour. We're going to talk about another team of heroes, but I do feel like this version of this specific team did kind of pull from the Fantastic Four a little bit, but specifically this this team was always kind of, a lot of people always felt like it had a lot of similar, similarities more to the X-Men than the Fantastic Four. Um, so this is a DC hero team. Um, one that's been pretty fairly popular in the last like uh, two like two three years um we are going to look at well <laughs> you can't tell from this box but you see which which uh toy line this is dc universe justice league unlimited um says the same thing on both sides um yeah i think this was like a um, exclusive to a toy of a company or a um like a subscription service called maddie collector it could be wrong where we got um we got like uh characters or figures that you know weren't released in the original line that the figure originated from or whatever um so we are talking about um let's see if i can get them out we are talking about the doom patrol Cool. Yeah. Um, this is Elastigirl. Um, I have a lot to say when I get to her. Um, <laughs> yes, the Doom Patrol. Um, this version of the Doom Patrol is apparently based off of the leader of the group, Mento. It's basically based off, um, like their designs are, I guess, what they would have looked like if they were in Justice League cartoon. Unfortunately, they did not appear in the Justice League cartoon. I still think it's awesome that we got these, um, like I said, because they didn't appear in the Justice League Unlimited TV show. Um, but we only get four members. Uh, Negative Man, really, really like how he looks. Um, if I, I thought, I didn't think about it. Um, if I was to retape these packages, I could display these guys on the wall. That'd be really cool. Um, and last, but certainly not least, Robot Man. Dope. Um, this is just what the inside of it looks like. Of course, I want I want them to all, you know, if, if, if I was to ever sell these, which I probably won't, I'll probably never sell these. Um, if I was to, like I said, I do want to, you know, keep them the way I, I received them outside of, like I said, opening the packaging. Um, so, yeah, like I said, the Doom Patrol. Um, but the four characters that we got... I believe are based off of, um, are based off of, so I guess we'll start with Robot Man first. We'll start with him first. Um, try to remember. <laughs> the, they're, the, the, these four characters are based off uh, the Teen Titans show, the original Teen Titans cartoon from the early mid 2000s. Um, spoiler, if you haven't seen that, well, that show's almost 20 at this point. If you haven't seen that 20-year-old cartoon, uh, we find out that Beast Boy was part of a team before he was part of the Titans. Um, I think that's really cool. So both Beast Boy and Robin, um, had experience fighting with other, you know, superheroes. Robin, it being Batman, for Beast Boy, it was the Doom Patrol, um, and because... He was always kind of treated like as a kid and he felt like he wasn't treated, you know, with respect by uh, this iteration. Mento was the leader of the team. Um, he always, he, he was always kind of, he always kind of felt like he was um, a weak link. So he, he, he left, he left, he to strike out on his own. And luckily he came, um, he met, he was able to meet Robin, Starfire, Cyborg and Raven and, we had a we actually had an origin episode how they all met which is really cool so like I said luckily he found his his fam his new family who treated him you know for the most part treated him with respect treated him as an equal um, 
course, Beast Boy is considered one of the strongest members of the team for a reason. <laughs> uh, he, so, you know. So we were going to get you. You can Google this. We were going to get Teen Titan uh, Doom Patrol figures with the I, I forgot the evil uh, like the last season. Um, I forgot the, the evil villain group that was an enemy to the Doom Patrol and the Titans. Whole big thing, whole big finale. Um, I forgot I forgot the name of the of the, the supervillain group, but some of those characters from the villain group and the Doom Patrol from how they all looked in the Titans cartoon were going to get toys and we were going to get a Doom Patrol style um, Beast Boy, how he looked before he joined the Titans. Um... That got canceled. That got canceled. Those toys looked so cool. It would have been so much fun to have to have had toys of those versions of the characters. So of course, me as a kid, this this version, this version, that version of Doom Patrol, that was my iteration to the characters. Like I didn't know who they were. Like, oh, who are these characters? You know, um, we did get some uh, DC Universe. Uh, figures, uh, the the uh, the big DC Universe action figures. Um, Robot Man and Negative Man got a figure. Negative Man also got a variant figure, and Elastigirl, uh, she got a um, she got a uh, a big figure, which also came with a little mini figure. Like she could shrink, she could grow, she could stretch her body. Um, so we got the original trio as traditional, you know, no, normal, normal scaled figures, which was really cool. And then we got, uh, so we, but we didn't get like, we didn't get Mento. We didn't get Professor Niles Calder, who technically was the original leader of the Doom Patrol. So we, they've got a little bit of figures, but these four versions are probably the best. Like I said, the other versions are good too, are equally as good. So you do have a little bit of variety. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, I was right. MaddieCollector.com has all four of them. Um, I did see someone did a custom of these and made them in the Teen Titans uniforms, um, which was nice, and had them displayed with Beast Boy, so that was cool. Um, I guess because these aren't too long, I'll read the bios. Uh, the victim of a horrific car crash, famous race driver Cliff Steele, Steele's life was saved when a brilliant surgeon, Dr. Niles Calder, transplanted trans Planted his brain into the into an indestructible ceramic metal body. Now embittered, now Im, now an embittered robot man still lends all his mechanical muscle to the Doom Patrol. So we kind of have a a Frankenstein type situation going on, and a lot of people have made um so similarities to that. So like so there were, for in case you guys didn't know. At one point, DC had their own streaming service. Um, well, that streaming service came to an end a couple years ago. But one of the shows we got that continued, I think it continued on, was um, was um, uh, Doom Patrol. Doom Patrol got their own show uh, where uh, Brendan Fraser, a very well-known actor, um, he was Robot Man. Well, he did the voice of Robot Man when they showed him as a human. He played him and, uh, you know, on camera. And they had a different actor in the Robot Man, you know, suit or whatever, costume suit. Um, but still really cool. Um, so I think this, this thing on his, on his chest might be to help him communicate, speak. I'm not sure. Um... I love like the metallic copper kind of look he has, um, head rotation. All these, all these uh, um, unlimited figures had basic articulation, but they were kind of, um, you know, just display. These were really intended for children, display uh, options, but they, um, I mean, adults, of course, adults can have them. I mean, you can have an entire. DC superhero supervillain collection just based off these figures. That's how many of them were made. Um, but he has solid posability. Um, one one fist is kind of uh, sculpted differently than the other, which is nice. 
Um, again, he's really, really nice. Mine has a little scratch on the back of his arm, his elbow, but it's not really bothersome. Um, this says DC Comics, China. Oh, it doesn't doesn't say what year. Um, so I think it was like 2008, 2009 maybe. Again, I had these guys out on display for a couple years and I eventually put them away. But he is a, he's awesome. He's a solid, solid um, um, piece. Let's put him to the side for now. We'll get to Negative Man. Um, see him and his packaging. Again, so Negative Man uh, was kind of like, at least in the show, like Robot Man kind of kind of represented like Frankenstein in a sense. Uh, excuse me, Elastigirl kind of represented um, the Blob, which I'll get back to on when I talk about her. And Negative Man kind of re represented Invisible Man because of the way he looked, which was really cool. Um, the show was cool. They added Cyborg to the group. That was neat. A couple other characters. I've only read uh, the Gerard Way run. Gerard Way, who I believe, was a musician. And he wrote a, a comic run of Doom Patrol. I thought it was pretty good. Um, I do think I prefer the older stories. So eventually I will hop back into the Doom Patrol at some point. Um, it says, after flying his rocket through a, a mysterious radiation belt in space... Ace test pilot Larry Trainer became the host of a mysterious energy being that could be set forth at will or up to 60 seconds. Now highly radioactive, Trainer was given special protective bandages Dr. Niles, by Dr. Niles Calder and joined the Doom Patrol as Negative Man. So when we saw it in the Teen Titans show, when he would use his powers, it would he would have to physically leave his body. So that meant that he his body could be vulnerable to an enemy attack. Um, or, you know, a villain could just, could just, you know, snatch his body, I drop him, and just be like, uh, you know, hold his body at gunpoint or something like that. So he kind of had, it had his negatives and benefits basically, but he kind of looks like a dummy. I mean, he kind of looks like a mummy. I said dummy. Um, I like how the hand is sculpted. Um, in the show, I think they made him gay and they made him pansexual, which was interesting. Um, so he has the D logo. So I like, you know, all the characters have these little D, pun not intended, belts. Their logos. I love that. Um, like I said, when um, his head can rotate, when I was talking about my cartoon and I was talking about how it was going to be about a team of superheroes, three of those superheroes made up three teenagers. I was going to talk about, um, well, I didn't say that their designs, I all wanted them to be like, you know, color coordinated, all have matching, uh, you know, kind of team colors, have like their emblems somewhere on their body, um, you know, but still have their own sense of style and personality, but still have this team unified look. So I'm, I'm, I'm really big on that when it comes to a team of heroes, you know, having something that says, yes, we're a team. Yes, we work together. Um. So he kind of has some some missing paint scratches on the back. Again, not that big of a deal because behind the figure. But again, very nice, very cool. I really, really like him. Yeah, so that is Negative Man. Um, I'll save the leader for last. Um, so now we have Rita Farr. Um, her name sounds very familiar to Helen Parr, Mrs. Incredible. I will get to that in a minute. Um, movie star Rita Farr had it all until exposure to a strange volcanic gas while on location shoot caused her to uncontrollably grow and shrink in size. Mastering her new powers under the, the direction of Dr. Niles Calder, Rita joined his new team of adventurers, the Doom Patrol. So like I said, people kind of feel like the Doom Patrol has a lot of similarities to the X-Men. I mean, they're not mutants, but they're kind of considered outcasts. Um, they live in a mansion, the leader's in a wheelchair, who is super intelligent. Um, Dr. Niles Calder does not have any powers to my, my, um, knowledge. It's just, he's super, super smart. Like, I know this knowledge is a superpower. Um, and I believe the person or the two or the people who created the Doom Patrol for DC had, um, you know, like Stan, were friends of Stan's and he talked to them. I guess telling them his idea of the X-Men and so I can't remember I think X-Men came first and then Doom Patrol 
but some people like there 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 are similarities. So it's up it's up to debate if the people who created Doom Patrol, oh, people who created Doom Patrol, d copied from X Men. But the, even though there are similarities, both you know teams feel unique enough to not be similar. Um, I dropped her. So here is Rita. Um, all the female heroes kind of have these have these certain poses for themselves. She can kind of rotate her legs a little bit, but it's kind of just stuck in a pose. I don't know if her leg is warped or not. Um, oh, the arms can go up and down. I love that she's wearing the white gloves. Um, on her back, on her butt, it just says DC Comics, made in China. Um, the D, pun not intended, the belt looks a little funky on hers, which isn't bad. Um, I like her eyes. I like her purple hairband. And she comes with a stand because she doesn't really stand that well. She's the only member who comes with a stand. Um, yeah, so that's cool so far. So these three... These three were the original Doom Patrol. These three and Dr. Niles Calder, they made, the four of them made up the Doom Patrol. Um, and then eventually we got Mento. Like I said, Mento was from, came later on, and a lot of other well known Doom Patrol team member characters came later on. Like I said, Mento was the leader in um, the Teen Titans cartoon. Oh, yeah, I forgot. So with her, um, like I said, I believe DC, Disney, Pixar had to pay DC to utilize Rita's, you know, superhero name, Elastigirl. And, you know, the Rita Farr, Helen Parr similarities. They had to pay, they had to pay DC to use the rights. I mean, this was a character who hadn't, I mean, or a group of characters who hadn't really been utilized outside of just the comics. So that's kind of interesting. And, you know, for the uh, Doom Patrol show, they changed her name to uh, her superhero name to Elastic Woman, Elastic Woman, Elastic Woman, which was cool, made sense, you know, whatever. Um, so I just thought that was that was interesting because Rita, she has stretchy powers, but she can also grow and shrink. So neat. And lastly, last of the group we have Memento, uh, wealthy industrialist Steve Dayton was the world's Fifth richest man, but the only way he could win the heart of Rita Farr, aka Elastigirl, was by using his telekinetic Mento helmet to become a hero in his own right. As Mento, Dayton became a valid member of the Doom Patrol. Interesting. Um, so, like I said, in the cartoon, Titans cartoon, he was kind of a hard ass. He was kind of too hard on Beast Boy. Um, I'm not sure if that was similar to his character in the comics or not. Um, I I know the Teen Titans show did get some uh, some comics, so they were able to kind of expand upon um, Beast Boy's relationship with Mento and the Doom Patrol, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. So here is Mento. This actually isn't my original one. The one I had... Um, had some, had, had some paint issues or something. So I think I just sold that one and got a replacement. Um, again, fun figure. Um, if I was to make a stop motion with these guys, it would be very easy because they have very basic articulation. Like I said, I love his black, purple. I love his, his helmet, like his facial expression, D logo. I love the, the yellow streak. Going down his chest. He's just fun. These guys are fun. You know, these are just such fun, cool characters. So, so showing them all together. Here they all here they all are together. Um dope. And I will show them real quick with um so some of the villains. Let's say I forgot the, the, the name of the supervillain group. They got some figures. Um, I forgot the, the line of figures these guys come from. I apologize. But we got the brain. 
who has a little gimmick where he pushes his brain down, his mouth kind of opens and closes. Um, and we have Majur Mala, who is his uh, companion and assistant. I believe he was like an evil scientist or something, and he did some crazy experiment that, you know, destroyed his body, and Mala was his ape, ape assistant companion, and Mala put his body on his brain in his robot. Um, so yeah, why not? It was like, okay, if I was to ever, you know, have these guys on display, which I did at one point, you know, why not have them displayed with, um, the Doom Patrol, but you see, they're not really in the same scale. Like, Mala should be, like, bigger than Mento or whatever. Um, but kind of crazy, like, we got these two characters, but I don't think we got the Doom Patrol in this, this series, this wave. Um... I also pulled my Fantastic Four back out, so get an idea. Here's the thing. Scale to Mala. Here's Mr. Fantastic scale to Mala. So maybe a little bit closer in size. Um, here's the brain. Two geniuses scaled with Mr. Fantastic. Uh, so let's see. Uh, let's see the Fantastic Four. Um, scaled with the Doom Patrol. I don't know if I can get them all together. Um, here are the Doom Patrol together. And here's the Fantastic Four together. Um, so I do like this. So it looks like the thing and uh robot man are around the same height but of course thing has more bulk that's really cool and you see the other characters of course the uh they're taller they're, they're taller than the fantastic four to kind of give you an idea so let's just see mr fantastic and mento together like that yeah not too bad cool so yeah that's kind of it um like it's a little detour give me a reason to talk about doom patrol like i said i think they're cool characters i will eventually uh go and watch the show i believe it's on hbo max so i have access to it um yeah like i said uh really awesome characters i do recommend comics the gerard way run was cool that's a that's a nice place to start um I'm trying to remember, I think Grant Morrison, very famous comic book writer, he, his run was very well received. That may have been like the 80s, maybe. Um, I, I recommend that run. I think the characters came out in like the 60s. Yeah, I think they came out in the 60s. Um, so like I said, a shame we never got those Titan figures. Um, if there was any way for those prototypes to appear like somewhere on eBay. I mean, that would be, that would be amazing to know that those were in the hands of someone who was going to take good care of those products and are selling them. That would be amazing if those came up for sale on um, eBay or something. I wouldn't be surprised if they already have at some point, but you know, like I said, like I said, that was 20 years ago. So, um, as the next video will be on, um, finally the Marvel legends, gift set with Dr. Doom and Herbie and Franklin Richards. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. Peace, you guys.